It took 30 years, but the acclaimed novel, Winter's Tale, it's now out in paperback. It's now a, a movie coming to theaters on Valentine's Day. The fairy tale romance stars Colin Farrell as a thief who ends up getting his own heart stolen by the, the woman whose house he intended to rob. Take a look. What are you doing here? I'm just robbing the place, you know. Is that still your intention? I, I, Nope. No, it isn't. Well, then. I suppose the polite thing to do would be to offer you a cup of tea. Colin Farrell, ladies and gentlemen, Yay! please welcome him. Thank you. Good morning. Oh, Colin, I watched this last night, and I just... It's Hated it. No, 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 no. It's a great scene. No, no. Thanks for having no, no. me. Thank you for coming by. No. <laughs> this is what I love about you. Peter Lake, just describe playing him, the character. It's fine, I got it. Yeah, he's got it. It's fine. <laughs> uh, playing him, the character, was a joy. It was a joy. It was, it was, I mean, one of the most beautiful things about being part of this film is being in New York. I'm not just saying that for five months, because the, the mm. book, uh, the film, the, the city is such an intrinsic part of the story. It's such a character in the story. So to be here, and to be here just before Sandy struck, and that was a crazy time to be in the city. And, um, and, and yeah, just to be around all these iconic landmarks and, and mm. just the energy of this place in the middle of winter. But uh, Peter Lake was a lovely character to play. Someone who was born, you know, in a world of hard knocks and came from a life of being an orphan and never had a family and never grew up in an environment of any kind of love or sense of belonging. And then he was somebody who, who found that sense of belonging through this love that he experiences in the first 10 or 15 minutes of the film. So it was a very sweet experience. It, very sweet all the way, way through it. And uh, you, ex you described it extremely well. And it's got, it's got everything, good versus evil. It has, it's, it's, it's a fantasy world. Yes. But it's a love story absolutely. at heart. Yeah, no, absolutely. It exists, I suppose, in, in, in two places that don't, at times can be diametrically uh, opposed. The world of the intimate and the world of the the internal and the heart and then the world of of culture and 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 cityscapes and mm -hmm. and the world of the imagination and the fantastical so there are elements of of what feel like supernatural to it but the most supernatural thing is the love between the two main characters it kind of is it's so sweet yes. and it's so immediate and it's so deep and it it ends up transcending time the story takes place over a hundred years and and so and when it does and we don't want to talk too much out of school for people who haven't read it uh, your character lives a hundred years plus when you didn't realize you had been living that long until yeah. the Jennifer Connelly uh, right. character comes along. Yeah. The emotion, the raw emotion, how did you tap into that? Realizing what you had experienced, remembering um, finally. I just human beings are emotional. We're emotional creatures, whether we like to admit it, admit it or not. You're either connecting to your emotion or you're suppressing it. Mm. You know, and of course there's gray areas in between those two obvious benchmarks. But um, that was fun. It was all there on the page. Akiva Goldsman wrote such yeah. a beautiful, beautiful script. And I mean, the book is so dense. I haven't read the book, but I have friends that love the book, that adore the book. And, and what Akiva did was just distilled a very particular aspect and, and, and fragment of the book, albeit a very important one, and turned it into the film and put a lot of his experience in. So the emotional weight of what the characters are going mm -hmm. through was very much on the page. It was very easy to access. And he was really moved by the fight scenes between you and Russell Crowe. You all really went there. Russell knows his way around a stage fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, he's, he's, you were holding your own, my man. He's you strong, he's strong man, Russell. He's, he's, he's well able to choreograph. But it was. They said it, and that's the word. It was kind of like you all were dancing. It was like a. It was. It was that's so what choreographed. It can be. Yeah, you can be. I mean, you're. You're. It's a to and fro. You're going off the person you're working with, and they're going off you. And and there is an understanding. It's. It's. Um, yeah. You. You don't. You're not trying to defeat the person you mm -hmm. are dancing with them. You're on the same team as them. Well, it works. And, you know, it's now a major, a major motion picture. As opposed picture. to a minor, yes, now it a is. minor uh, motion picture. That's what I want to see in a book someday. Now a minor motion picture. I'm telling you, I, people need to see this. Thank you. And need to see you. And thank you. Can I, have you seen my legs? I've been doing an ab workout for the last five minutes. <laughs> Because the seat the seat broke, so I've been. <laughs> Did you see my that? My lower you abs. Didn't hear it? My lower abs are yeah. getting amazing. <laughs> look at this. You can do the fight scene all this. over again. Spare, this spare no TV expense people. at GMA. <laughs> Whoa! Does that mean? Does that mean? Broke it. Colin Farrell, ladies and gentlemen, is um, <laughs> soon to be coming back here to Good Morning America. Winter's Tale opens nationwide on Valentine's Day. Perfect.